algae is a very important component of the ecosystem. And while most algae is harmless, there is some algae that is toxic um, that is called cyanobacteria or cyanohabs, but more commonly known as blue-green algae. So an excess of nutrients that enter our waterways, um, most notably nitrogen and phosphorus, um, when there are high levels of those in the waterways, that can increase the levels of algae. There are a couple characteristics to look for when looking for a blue-green algae bloom. The first one is it will be a bright green or a turquoise color on the surface of the water, almost looking like spilt paint. Another characteristic is it will look like grass clippings in the water. When the algae is non-toxic or not harmful to people or pets, it will look more like green hair on the water, very long and filamentous. There are some more lakes that are more susceptible to algae blooms than there are others. And those are lakes that are going to ha have high concentrations of nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. So summer is the perfect time for algae blooms. And that's because we have high temperatures, a lot of sunlight, there's little storms or wind, and then lots of nitrogen and phosphorus in the water. So toxic algae blooms have been an issue throughout the United States. We have been seeing this as a growing problem in the past decade. In 2015 is when Colorado first started monitoring and being mindful of these toxic algae blooms. We've seen in Bar Lake and Cherry Creek are two examples of algae blooms that we've had um, back in 2015. So CPW conducts routine visual monitoring. When we suspect a toxic algae bloom is present on a water body, we'll take water samples, and if we see um, a species of toxic algae present, then we take it in for um, further testing. What you'll start noticing is once the algae settles, if it's cyanobacteria, it will be settling at the top. If the algae is non-toxic, you'll notice that it will start settling at the bottom of the bottle. Lake managers are responsible for monitoring their own water bodies. At CPW, we're very proactive and we conduct routine visual, visual monitorings on our water bodies. And when we suspect that a bloom is present, that is when we'll take a sample for further testing. So there are a couple things that the public can do to minimize the presence of blue-green algae. One of them is really simple, cleaning up your dog poop. Another one is being mindful of the fertilizers you use, how much, and especially the ingredients. Um, De-icers that contain urea also have nutrients. When visiting a CPW water body, be mindful of the signage. If we suspect an algae bloom is present, we will post either caution or warning signs. Each sign will have a list of the safe and unsafe activities. If you come in contact or if your pet comes in contact with any of the blue-green algae, it's important to rinse off immediately as it can irritate the skin. For further information about symptoms or what you can do if you come into contact with blue-green algae, please visit the CDPHE's website.